three obscure disastrous British military blunders. Number 1. James Abercrombie's failed attack on Fort Ticonderoga. The Seven Years' War had many British failures, such as Braddock's pathetic expedition into the Ohio River Valley in 1755. However, during the war there wasn't a blunder worse than the Battle of Carolyn in 1758. Better known as the Battle of Fort Ticonderoga, all of the blame can be put on James Abercrombie, whose incompetence caused the deaths of over 2,000 men. The French defending the fort had a strength of around 3,600 men, while the British had around 18,000. You may be wondering how the British could have lost this battle, being so numerically superior. The terrain of the area provided prime flanking opportunity, while the hills nearby were vacant and practically had a sign on them saying, put artillery here. However, Abercrombie decided it would be better to attack the fort head-on, and in the following battle over 2,000 British troops died, compared to the French losses of around 400. This battle was the deadliest of the American theatre of the war, and Abercrombie was fired and replaced with General Amherst, who captured the fort in 1759. Number 2 the Battle of Insamanco in 1823. The Anglo-Ashanti War began in 1823, when Sir Charles McCarthy, who was a West African governor, declared war on the Ashanti tribe. McCarthy handled the opening campaign so badly, you would think he was from an SNL skit. He began with a force of 6,000 men, and rather than keep the army together, he divided it into four uneven columns. On the 21st of January, without the other three columns, he encountered a group of around 10,000 Ashanti soldiers. Believing the Ashanti force was made up of many different groups, he instructed the band to play the British national anthem, hoping many of the groups would defect. This, however, seemed to have the opposite effect as the Ashanti soldiers came closer. The British soldiers fought valiantly, but they were undersupplied, and paired with the desertion of the men tasked with bringing reserve ammo to the front, they ran out of supplies at 4 p.m. The Ashanti stormed the camp, killing all but 20 men. McCarthy's skull was used as a goblet by Ashanti tribes and kept as a trophy. McCarthy's underestimation of the Ashanti soldiers and the mismanagement of his forces led to the near destruction of a British army. Number 3. The First Anglo-Afghan War While the early stages of the war went well for the British, being able to capture Kabul, it soon turned into disaster when General William Elphinstone was put in command of the army stationed in Kabul. A serious contender for worst general in British history, Elphinstone fought valiantly during the Napoleonic Wars, leading a regiment during the Battle of Waterloo. However, in his old age he was constantly battling illness, and was sometimes bedridden. When in Afghanistan he was described as elderly, indecisive, weak, and unwell, and in no shape to command an army, especially in the harsh conditions of Afghanistan. He did nothing as Afghan bandits raided British camps, sniped at his men, and captured his supplies. Eventually, he yielded to the Afghan troops, led by Akbar Khan, and agreed to withdraw to India. Elphinstone made a deal with Khan that they would be given safe passage through the mountains. On the 6th of January, his army of 3,500 troops and around 14,000 camp followers set out, moving in a column through the Afghan mountains. However, Akbar betrayed Elphinstone, and Afghan troops fired at the tail end of the column from the walls of Kabul, and massacred the wounded and sick Elphinstone left behind. Despite this betrayal, Elphinstone naively believed that the escort and supplies Khan had promised would still be delivered. Unsurprisingly, they weren't, and Elphinstone's army had to ration supplies and fend off the incessant Afghan attacks. Elphinstone, 
ridden with gout was begged by his officers to turn back as they could take refuge in an empty fort near Kabul. However, Elphinstone stupidly ordered his men to continue moving. By the second day, the Afghans managed to capture many of the column's artillery, and they were now left with only three cannons. Later, Elphinstone fell for another one of Akbar's tricks, waiting about 10 kilometers away from Kabul for another escort he had promised. There was no escort, all the army received was an Afghan ambush, and 3,000 people at the back of the column were massacred. The remaining soldiers were severely frostbitten, missing fingers, and their muskets were unusable thanks to the cold. Around 1,000 people opted to head back to Kabul, however, they were intercepted and all were either enslaved or killed. By the fifth day, the army was reduced to 200 men, all split up throughout the wilderness, with 12,000 men either killed or captured, including Elphinstone. The final group of survivors consisted of around 60 men. When Akbar promised he would spare them, a British officer responded with, not bloody likely. They met the same fate as their comrades. With this, Elphinstone's army became the first and only British army to ever be totally destroyed. One man, Assistant Surgeon William Bryden was the sole survivor, riding into Jalalabad on the 13th of January, 1842. At the end, over 18,000 people died, making it one of the worst blunders in military history. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Goodbye.